All right, hello everyone. This is Crota coming at you, giving you a little bit of a sneak peek on Curse of Nax. Those of you guys who did not know, it is coming out probably to tomorrow as I'm recording this. But for many of you guys, the video is probably, or the game is probably already released. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the cards that have been revealed, uh, give you my thoughts on them, and then give a, try to give an overarching thought. Some of the cards I've seen before, some of them I haven't. I wanted to really, really take a look and just give my first gut responses. I'm sure as the meta changes, I am definitely going to, I'm pretty much going to pretty much change my tune. You know what? Uh, might as well add my camera as well. Oh, that's a little big. Whoa, how's that? All right. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Baron Rivendare, uh, your minions trigger their death rattles twice. Um, pretty much everything seems to be revolving around death rattle in Curse of Nax. Of, uh, what certain certain classes or certain um, certain classes or certain things that are revolving around death rattle or certain decks that will revolve around death rattle are obviously going to really benefit from Baron um, leper gnomes uh, loot hoarders very very strong cards just to try to get that early early advantage suiciding into things it can work out extremely well for you stat wise it is a one seven so nothing nothing to shake a stick at it. It has a lot of durability, so um, it is still a potential threat, but it doesn't really pose that much of a damage threat. Obviously, we'll go ahead and see what happens and pe how people play this. Um, I'm, I'm also curious as to how Rebirth plays with this, but more on that later. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next card. Um, we are going to be going into the Dancing Swords. Your opponent draws a card. This is just a solid stat monster. It's a 3-drop 4-4. Four, four, but it has a negative death rattle. Your opponent gets to draw a card, but it it does it is a little bit difficult to get rid of. So um, we'll see how this particular card is going to work. Perhaps if it is used in the current um, in the current meta where a rogue can shadow step shadow step blue light oracles or give bananas to your opponents, try to clog up your opponent's hand so that they actually lose a lot of cards. That could also be very, very beneficial as well. Um, the Ruby and Egg, it's a 2-drop 0-2 that has a very positive, very big upside on the Death Rattle, as it does and give you a 4-4. Four, four. Um, nothing really to talk about here. It's exactly what you, it's exactly what you think it is. Um, certain cards, uh, such as Flame Tongue Totem, will probably work best with it just because you need a way to be able to attack with the 0-2 in order to trigger that Death Rattle and make it much more beneficial. So yeah, very, very strong, very good. A lot of things can, a lot of things can happen uh, using this with power overwhelming, purposely attacking, killing something, and then having a 4-4 on, on the upside also works out extremely well. Uh, Shade of Nax, uh, at the start of your turn, gains plus one, plus one, and it has stealth. So it's one of those growing, growing threats early on. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like a questing adventurer, except for your opponent cannot target it, and it can only grow once per turn. So um, how it's going to be used, I do think it is going to be a giant, um, giant silence bait, but you get to control when you're actually using it. Short of mass dispel, or short of some mass AoE non-targeting ability, um, your opponent's going to have to deal with a rather large target. Just remember, though, that on turn 4, you're, you have a 3-3. Three, three. On turn 5, you have a 4-4. Four, four. On turn 6... You have a 5-5 five, five if you drop it turn 3. So stat-wise, it is not, not, not super, super good. But some interesting things can can happen um, very, very well. Uh, or some interesting things can be used with it. I just don't know. Um, you're going to have to really play with a deck specific to the shade in order to use it well. And there's a lot of cards here. So I'm going to be, this video is going to be really long. Hopefully you guys enjoy my little rants. Undertaker. A very solid card. Every whenever you summon a minion with death rattle, gain plus one plus one. Just a solid card. Solid solid card right there. Um, anything that's a growing threat, that's a that's a one two to begin with. Um, you can really build decks around in constructed in arena play. Not going to be happening so much. <clears throat> Moving right along, Poison Seeds. We're going into the class-specific cards. Each class gets one new card. Poison Seeds is destroy all minions and summon two two trends to replace them. Basic, that is extremely... Uh, it's, it's very good for Druid. 
just because Druid doesn't have very strong removal. Um, Druid's re current removal is Naturalize, which is not really that useful. You have no way of, of removing very, very big targets. The downside to this is that after you destroy all the minions, your guys are going to have um, summoning sickness still, so they will not be able to attack. So it's not nearly as broken as a lot of people are thinking, um, but and it is rather expensive at four, but it is something that was needed as Druid needs a way of getting rid of very big, very big creatures. If it was any other class, if it was if it was rogue or rogue or mage or anything, it would not be nearly as good just because you're like, well, I have polymorph, I have flame strike, I have fireball, I have hex. Those are the other big single target removals. This is more of an AOE style. Um, when you poison seed against a double rag, then you know you can laugh. But yes, there are good situations. But how often are those good situations going to arise? That is the question. You're going to have to really control this particular card. Uh, a four drop five five return a friendly minion to your hand, and and this is one of those situations where. This is one of those situations where um, they're opening up the gameplay elements. This death rattle actually means that on your opponent's turns, something something can happen for you. You still have control of something. And this death rattle, in addition to some other uh, some other death rattles, are cl uh, just clear signs of that. It's a four drop five five. It is a very big stat monster. Uh, yeah, it's just a really big stat monster. I don't know how much it's going to be used uh, unless you... Oh, flip side of this. This death rattle, you can trigger on your turn as opposed to secrets, which you cannot trigger. So you can purposely attack with the 5-5. Five five. You, can, you can drop a Leroy Jenkins, attack with the 5-5, five five, kill your 5-5, five five, um, or attack with the 6-2, kill your 5-5 five five later, and then bring it back into your hand to play it again. This is going to be opening up some interesting play, but it can also be used against you. You just got to be careful about that. Uh, Death Spite, basically true. It's a four drop, four two weapon. Uh, true Silver Champion, except it has different text. It deals one damage to all minions, which means that you, if you have, well, there's ways to use it. It's going to be a very interesting deck. Arcanite Reaper may may go away just because the difference between 4 damage and 5 damage is not nearly that much. Um, especially with the, way, uh, with the way Warrior works with being able to deal 1 additional damage with Cruel Taskmaster. Or being able to just execute large targets like that. Um, being able to deal 1 damage to all minions can give you extra... What? Give you extra armor with... Uh, with what? Shield bearer, it can give, it can enrage or enrage your characters. It has a lot of very, very big upsides. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to uh, blow through this because I got what ten of thirty-two cards left to go. Um, Avenge when one of your minion dies gives a friendly minion plus three plus two. This is one of those things where, on your opponent's turn, you can still trigger some interesting things to happen. So I am very, very curious on how this is gonna work. Um, you're going to have to be very careful trying to take out Paladin's minions as you may inadvertently make another one much, much larger. Uh, duplicate, whenever a friendly minion dies, put two copies of it into your hand. This is going to be one of those where your opponent can play around a little bit, mo a little bit more easily where they can attack and get rid of the smaller minion first. Uh, nothing like grabbing another two mirror images after a mirror, mirror image dies. All right, Void Caller. Put a demon from your hand into the battlefield. That is a very, very, very good card, um, considering the number of of just strong demons that you can have. Um, being able to play Illidan Storm Rage, being able to play the five drop five seven charge. All of those are very, very strong. Um, a death rattle that works for you as, as opposed to against you. Um, Void Caller, just a very solid, very, very strong card. Um, now you have to really play with silences or you have to really hope that your opponent doesn't have a very large hand when that death rattle triggers. Reincarnate, which is, oh, oh reincarnate, destroy a minion, then return it to life with full health. Um, this is actually uh, one of my one of my 
concern cards. Uh, reincarnate uh, with Leroy Jenkins and ancestral ancestral spirit. You play a Leroy Jenkins, attack with it. Play an ancestral spirit. Play a reincarnate on it. Attack with a Leroy Jenkins. Attack with a Leroy Jenkins. That's eight mana with eighteen burst damage. Uh, and it it can do even more if you have a flame tongue totem on the field. This is um, this is a big issue for me. So um, I'm curious as to how reincarnate is going to change this. Um, oh yeah, it, it also works extremely well with Sylvanas. You can do so many th so many nasty nasty things with this particular card. <laughs> Dark Cultus. Uh, three drop, three four. If that's all it was, it would be a stat monster already, and its death rattle gives plus three health to another friendly minion. Um, very, very good. Uh, imagine having what void, um, uh, the four drop five five. I'm I'm forgetting the name of all my cards. The four drop five five light spawn. All right, give it give another guy plus three plus three. Very, very good. Moving along, right along, web spinner. One drop, one one that let you draw an additional beast card. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a beast card from your deck or a beast card from nowhere. D draw uh, or I think it, it should be draw from your deck. So it's a random beast card from your deck. Um, so it's just gonna open up a lot of early play for beasts and early play for hunters. Hunter didn't have that much early presence, which was perhaps one of their biggest issues after. Um, after Starving Buzzard got changed down to a 2-1, um, short of coining out an animal companion on turn 3, or on turn 2, you you didn't really do much as a hunter early on. So this is going to open up and maybe make the hunter deck a little bit faster. Lotheb, a battle cry. Enemy spells cost 5 more next turn. Why is this so good? It's a 5-drop, five 5-5. Five, five that is pretty much only going to be dealt with what is on the board. It's going to be difficult to polymorph it, fireball it, or do anything to it. It's it's pretty much it, it's pretty much untouchable by a spell turn number uh, turn one. So that is why it is so 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 good. Um, the stats are good. If it was a four four, it wouldn't be nearly as good. The stats and the fact that it is difficult to take out makes it extremely good, and perhaps this might be a good counter to <clears throat> um, a good counter to uh, those very very annoying miracle rogue decks, especially if you can like bounce it back to your hand and play it again. So very strong, very interesting. Um, really interested to see how this meta is going to be changed. A mad scientist, death rattle. Put a secret from your deck into the into the battlefield. Ooh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I'm gonna go very well in the mage deck. Um, wow, that that works out extreme. Uh, this yeah, it's gonna go so well in a mage deck. Um, being able to mad scientist out some stuff and thinning out your deck as well. Essentially, it is draw a card and play it for free face down. It That's really good. Wow, that's, re that's really good. Also, because it's a 2-drop two 2-2, two, two, most 2-drops that are problematic have 2 vitality. Uh, Fairy Dragon, Knife Juggler, um, the only one that isn't a 2-2 two two or does not have 2 health, I think, is um, the Berserker, which you attack first and then you trade with the, the Scientist later. So really interesting, really looking forward to this. Wow, th that's really good. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this because this, these are the first times I'm actually seeing um, put... Uh, it doesn't say put a secret from your deck into the battlefield. It doesn't say put a random one. Do you get to choose? Oh my goodness, if it actually like pulls up a menu and and says that you can choose one, that is huge. Wow. Wow. All right, Stone Skin Gargoyle. At the start of your turn, rest restore this minion to full health. Three drop, one four. Uh, very nice. Uh, you needed a way to to be able to to keep high vitality. This is a good blocker or a good way of like dealing with one ones. Um, whether or not it it counts as a heal is a good question. Um, if you just 
what if you have the the guy that says every single time it gate what every time you heal it gets plus two attack that would make this really good or northshire cleric it heals you draw a card um this is and this is interesting interesting uh the lag death rattle if fugan also died in this game's summon status all right so i need a so it's a five drop seven four so big 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 monster um and where is fugan i need to find out where fugan is okay is, is fugan this one nope is fugan this one nope all right, uh, Stalag, if you can also die, summon uh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus is probably some really, really big guy. Um, we'll see. It doesn't say summon from your deck. It doesn't say summon from your hand. Does it just automatically create him out of nowhere? But normally, if it does that, it will tell you, like, create a 2-1 or, you know, death rattle or, or, or something like that. If you can also die in this game, summon. All right. Sludge, Belcher, Taunt, Death Rattle. Uh, summon a 1-2 slime with taunt it is a tazdingo with a death rattle uh could be interesting i don't know how much value i put into a 1-2 taunt but then again it is another guy to block <clears throat> to block to make sure you don't die so it, it could have some really good two two for one trades um it makes maxna destroy any minion damaged by this minion Ooh, okay so it's basically it's basically, hey, um, silent assassin, except for it has high vitality and it's a beast. Ooh, so you can you can do some interesting things with beast if you are a hunter. That's going to be interesting. Ultimate shadow word pain. Cabal shadow priest, please. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Zombie chow. A one drop, two, three, restore five health to the enemy hero. So I guess this is this is more for uh, being able to block your opponent's early stuff. If you know you're going to be going into late game, all you like your opponent almost wants to keep this guy alive just so that he can restore enemy uh, health early on. You want to place it down to start killing your opponent's stuff, all right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Death Lord, three drop two eight. Okay, Death Rattle. Your opponent puts a minion from their deck into the battlefield. Who? But that is a really big two eight. Huh. Interesting. Anti Zoo card. It is anti Swarm cards. Will be interesting. It doesn't say random again. That's one of my biggest concerns. Because if your opponent gets to choose a minion, just like, yeah, sure. you can. I'm going to play Rag. Or I'm going to play Ysera on turn one. Or I'm going to play Deathwing. Yeah, you, you got to be careful about that. It should say it puts a random minion unless they get to choose, which makes the Death Lord pretty much useless. Echoing Ooze. Summon an exact copy of this minion at the end of the turn. Okay. So you play an ooze, and at the end of the turn, it gets another ooze. All right. Uh, Fugan, if, St if Stalag is also di also died this game, summon Thaddeus. Here's a question. What happens if you and your opponent are both playing with each? If you attack with the Fugan into their Stalag, and they both die, the time you, like... One death rattle goes off, then the other death rattle goes off, the second death rattle goes off and says, hey, the conditions are met. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that works, especially in mirror, in mirror matches where both of them are in play. That could, that could play in some really, really strange things. Spectral Knight. Can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Wow. A 4-6 fairy dragon. Um, that's going to be very difficult to remove. Um, wow, that, that's huge. That's huge. That's really nice. Um, can't be fireballed, can't be picked off. That, that Spectral Knight is going to 
um, do a lot of good things. Um, yeah, I, I like that card a lot. Solid stat monster and with a very good ability as well. Haunted Creeper, uh, t one, two that summons oh, two spectral spiders. That could be very useful, especially if you're if you're playing as hunter. If you're able to attack, drop, well, say drop a starving buzzard, and then summon two spiders, draw two cards. Very very interesting combinations like that. Kelthazad, at the end of the turn, summon all friendly minions that died this turn. Wow. Wow, so you could purposely... You could purposely kill a bunch of whole, like, a lot of stuff. And... Wow. Sylvanas... Uh, Car... Karn? Or Karen? The four five that summons a four five. Uh, it avoids BGH. It has a high vitality. That's a that's a solid card. I I like this card a lot. The coding on this card must be rather. It, wow, getting death rattles. Get oh the, all sorts of interesting things. Interesting plays. Minions with battle cry cost two more. It's a two drop one four that makes other minions cost more. Very nice. Uh, makes Leroy Jenkins cost more. Makes Shattered Sun Cleric cost more. Makes th this is another anti swarm card because all of a sudden your your opponent's like I can't play Defender of Argus. Oh my gosh, they can't even like they might be like oh. You coin that out turn one. I can't even. I can't play a flame imp turn two. Wow, this these are definitely cards meant to stop rush, and I really appreciate that. Being able to slow down the rush a bit, that is huge. The web lord is is a very good card. I like where they're taking the meta. Um, it's not a silver bullet by any means. Um, it's more of a roundabout. Let's stop everything. Very nice card. Unstable Ghoul. Taunt. Death Rattle. Deal one damage to all minions. All right. Way of stopping the swarm again. Wailing Soul. Battle Cry. Silence your other minions. It sounds bad until you realize you can remove freeze on on your guys. Like there's been times when you're like, "Oh, I got frost nobud. I wish I had a way of removing all of the freeze." Wait, I do. Wailing soul, very solid. If all of a sudden your opponent is thinking that doomsday doomsayer in addition to frost nova is a board clear, you drop a wailing soul, attack into it. Yeah, that's really good. And Thaddeus is a 10 drop, 11, 11. All right, it is summoned by Stalag and Fugan. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of Curse of Nax as it is coming up right around the corner.